Now, you know what? I'm not done talking about Texas a and because I have some more to say about Jimbo Fisher. Because this is ridiculous. There is no reason why Texas A&M should have any business losing to Appalachian State. No disrespect to Appalachian State. But Jimbo Fisher, I feel, is the most overrated head coach in college football. And this isn't my first time saying this. I said this a couple of months ago during the offseason that I feel that Jameis Winston is the last elite level quarterback that Jimbo Fisher has had and has developed and produced in his offense. And Jimbo Fisher is labeled by many to be a quarterback whisperer. Now, at one point, you know, this was true because... Prior to him having Jameis Winston, he also had Christian Ponder and EJ Manuel. So he had a pretty good run at one point. But after Jameis Winston, he hasn't really had any elite level quarterback play. You had Sean McGuire. You had DeAndre Francois, who had a pretty decent one year. But outside of that, when's the last time Jimbo Fisher has produced a superstar level quarterback? In his offense. Kellen Mond was. He was good. But he wasn't a superstar. He was on the same level as Ian Book. They were really good quarterbacks. But they weren't elite. Superstar level quarterbacks. So. For Jimbo Fisher. He's been at Texas A&M. For five years. And in his first 50 games at Texas A&M. He has a record of 35 and 15. You know what? Kevin Sumlin's record was his first 50 games at Texas A&M. It was 36 and 14. Now, I'm not trying to say that Kevin Sumlin and Jimbo Fisher are on the same level or anything like that because Jimbo Fisher still at the end of the day is a championship winning coach. He is a really good recruiter and I still feel he is a really good head coach. And I like the fact that Jimbo Fisher is really vocal and he doesn't hold back. But at the same time, he does have to make some changes to his offensive philosophy, his scheme, his play calling. And maybe he can go as far as, you know, giving up play calling. Because I think one of the toughest things to do as a head coach is... To sacrifice play calling because it involves you having to let go some of your pride and swallowing a little bit of your ego. But I think for Jimbo Fisher, the game has kind of passed him by in the sense that he hasn't evolved his offense to the level needed to win the championship or to compete at a championship level. Like this bubble screen, simplistic offense is holding back Texas and them and the talent that they have because what's the point of recruiting five and four star quarterbacks and wide receivers if you're going to plug them into an offense that is just going to hinder their development and isn't going to maximize their talent and I think for Jimbo Fisher a large reason why Texas and them still hasn't cross that threshold yet and they haven't reached that ceiling of getting into the college football playoffs is because their offense hasn't been there they haven't been explosive you see Michigan's offense was old school it was throw back run the football down your throat but it was still explosive in a sense it was an explosive offense when it came to what they got from the ground game But they also could beat you through the air. But you look at Texas A&M's offense, it's like they have a okay ground game. They have produced pretty good running backs, but you haven't produced any Dalvin Cooks. I mean, Spiller was pretty good. But I mean, when you look at Texas A&M's offense, everybody's talent and potential is just being held down. And for Jimbo Fisher, I think for him, it's time for him to give up play calling and try to find somebody else who can do it better. And I think that's what makes some of the greatest head coaches great head coaches 
because they have to realize things that they may have to hand over to somebody else. Somebody else can do something else better than you can. And that isn't really a knock on you because as a head coach, there are plenty of things that you have to balance. Roster management, checking up on the players, the game plan, all that stuff. So there's nothing wrong with handing the responsibilities over to somebody else who can just do that at a very high level. And I can help you succeed as a head coach, but I don't really know what it is with Jimbo Fisher and his offense, but something has to change because you can't say, oh, we don't have the athletes no more because you have the athletes. You have talent on the offensive line. You have talent at wide receiver, running back. You have depth at the position. You're not hurting. You didn't under-recruit at the position. And I mean, you're recruiting four and five-star quarterbacks. So there's no reason why your offense should be producing at the level that it has. I mean, this is an offense that is still struggling to produce big plays downfield in the passing game. And in this day and age of college football, it has been more than easier to have an explosive offense when you have the talent that Texas A&M has. Literally, stop running these bubble screens and let these all these athletes that you recruit show you why they're athletes. Let them run downfield and catch some 20-yard drag routes, or not drag routes, but like 20-yard outs. Or, you know, do something more than just the simplistic slants and stuff like that. Have some more advanced level passing concepts in your offense. But for Jimbo Fisher, if you're a Jimbo Fisher stand, you can't make any more excuses for him. Because at this point, he's been at Texas a and long enough where Texas a and should not be underperforming to Appalachian State. And Appalachian State is not a great program. You feel me? They're a solid G5 school, but they're not like an elite level G5. They're an okay G5, but, you know, for Texas A&M, this is a school that you should have handled pretty convincingly. But you didn't. And Jimbo Fisher has been at Texas A&M Long enough where, you know, five years is enough where you should already have your recruits in. You should already be competing at a really high level. But yet, you're still struggling. And a and had a head start. Because now look at all of the teams who have now kind of caught up to Texas a and Ole Miss, Arkansas. There are plenty of teams now that are close to catching up to almost beating or almost being the second best team in the SEC West. You know, it's still a gap talent-wise between a and and everybody else. But at the same time, despite the fact that Texas a and is so talented, they don't execute to the level that they should. And I think when you look at Jimbo Fisher, there's something that he is not doing that he should be doing, and it's holding bad Texas A&M. And I definitely feel like his play calling has to change, or maybe he should just hand it over to somebody who can do it at a better level. But you guys let me know what you guys think about Jimbo Fisher. Is he holding bad Texas A&M? Is Texas A&M going to be able to get their offense fixed? Let me know down in the comment section down below.